In this video, we'll be combining all of our exponent rules. So we're going to work this same problem twice, and I'm just showing you that the order that you go in is not going to matter. You can pick the method that makes the most sense to you. So in this first example, I'm going to combine the inside uh, part first, the part in parentheses, and then bring in this negative 2 exponent. And then uh, after that, I'm going to bring the negative 2 in, uh, exponent in in the beginning. So first of all, let's combine this. I'm going to combine the numerator. We have an x to the negative 1 power and x squared power. So I add those exponents. Negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. So I have x to the first on top. I have a y squared on top. I have x squared and y to the negative 2 on the bottom. That's all raised to the power of negative 2. Now I'll combine the x's. So I have x to the first on top, x squared on bottom. So the bottom actually wins the x by 1. So it's x to the first. We don't have to put the exponent of 1. So I'll take that off. For the y's, I have y squared on top, y to the negative 2 on the bottom. Our rule is we subtract those exponents, but our shortcut is we look at the exponents. We have a 2 on top, negative 2 on bottom. So the top wins by 4. So it's going to be y to the fourth on top. Still need to bring that negative 2 exponent in. So I'll do that next. So I bring negative 2 in here and here. So I get y to the negative 8 power over x to the negative 2 power. I'm multiplying outside to inside. The y to the negative 8 is going to the denominator, and I'll make that exponent positive. The x to the negative 2 power comes up to the numerator. I make its exponent positive. So x squared over y to the 8th is the final answer. Again, we'll work this same problem again, just in a different, uh, we'll take a different path. Okay, we're going to work the same problem again, but just take a different path. So this time I'm going to bring in the negative 2 exponent to everything in the beginning and handle that part first. So the negative 2 gets multiplied by every single exponent, numerator and denominator, in this problem. So once we do that, we have x to the positive 2 power right here, because negative 1 times that negative 2 gives us positive 2. We have y to the negative 4 power, that's this 2 times that negative 2. And we have x to the negative 4 power, that's this 2 exponent times that negative 2 there. Then in the denominator, we'll have x to the negative 4 power. That's that negative 2 times that positive 2 there. And then y to the positive 4 power. That's the negative 2 outside times that negative 2 there. Then we can start combining. So in the numerator, I have x squared and x to the negative 4 power. So I add those exponents. I'm multiplying their bases. I add the exponents. So I get x to the negative 2 power there. 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. The y to the negative 4 isn't changing in this step. Denominator is not changing in this step. Now I can compare the numerator and denominator. So for the x's, I have x to the negative 2 power here, x to the negative 4 power here. The rule that we use is who wins and by how many. Well, the negative 2 is bigger by 2, so the top is going to win the x. The numerator wins the x with an x squared. y to the negative 4, y to the positive 4, on the in the denominator so this one right here this exponent is bigger by 8 negative 4 to 4 or they're 8 apart so I have a y to the positive 8 in the denominator and you can see we got the same answer either way so the path that you take doesn't matter you still get there as long as you apply the rules appropriately all right we have an additional example here this would be number 11 for the students in my class so the first thing I'm going to do is simplify this little section right here. I need to bring this negative 2 exponent that's outside the parentheses inside to all of the other exponents, or all the exponents inside the parentheses. Outside to inside, we multiply the exponents. So I get 2 to the negative 2 power. Why? Because there is an implied first power there, and I multiply that negative 2 exponent that's outside times the implied 1 exponent that's inside. So 2 to the negative 2. And then I get k to the negative 4 power. That's this 2 times that negative 2. And I already had a multiply uh, by k cubed there, all, all over k squared. So next step, I'm going to combine these two right here. I have a k to the negative 4th 
times a k to the third. I add those exponents because I'm multiplying their bases. So negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So I still have the 2 to the negative 2 power there. And k to the negative 1 power all over k squared. Next step, and there's more than one path to take, I'm going to go ahead and combine and figure out how the k uh, base needs to end, what, it, what its final exponent needs to be. So I have a k squared on bottom, a k to the negative 1 on top. So the bottom, the denominator, has an exponent that's 3 bigger. So negative 1 to 2 is uh, a difference of 3 there. So I have k cubed in the denominator there. The bottom wins the k by 3. So negative 1 to 2, they're 3 apart. So k cubed in the denominator. And then I have this 2 to the negative 2 power in the numerator. I bring it to the denominator and make the exponent positive. Nothing left on the numerator, so I have to put a 1 there to hold that uh, numerator in place there. And then one last step, 2 squared becomes 4, so it's 1 over 4k cubed. And that would be your final answer on that one.